Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Hold on, let me wrap that around. And this is Let's Make a Game. It is not Lumber Taken 2, although it does say Lumber Taken 2 and, and everything else, because I'm trying to do simple things that I really enjoy off of Lumber Tycoon 2 in my own game. I'm trying to create my own. <clears throat> so one of the things that I, I started to do was I was going to go in here and start creating um, some of my own tree modules. And I realized I've never shown you guys how to do module scripts in the game or in, in my book. <gasps> what? It's supposed to be the advanced Roblox code. It's it's not in there. I didn't do any modules. Um, it's it's meant to get you up to a specific. Never mind. I'm not going to go into the details. If this is your first time tuning in, I do recommend that you go watch the other um, starting my own game things. Um, the reason why. Okay. <clears throat> so see this tree right here. See this little oak tree. All right. This. All right. And like all the trees, they all have specific properties, specific things that are identical across every single one. So you gotta think of this as not being, hey, that's an oak tree. Think of this as, hey, this is a this is a module module of some kind. This is there there's a specific thing, something to initialize it, something to give it its color, um, how many sections it's got, how it grows, um, what colors up here, how much health it has when I hit it. Um, because every single one of the trees has the same characteristics. So, for example, it's got hit points, it's got um, money value whenever you sell it off, uh, plus it has money value as um, one thing, and it has money value as a plank. And it, it has specific prop properties. You put this into a sawmill, and it will make it into a specific kind of plank. You're, you're not going to take an oak tree, toss it in your uh, your um, sawmill and it comes out as lava wood. It just doesn't work. Um, this chop right here, that that is specific to this tree. That tree doesn't have it. This tree does, right? And it has it specifically at those spots and those things. So each one of these is a property of the tree. Um, also when you cut it, right? Look, there, that little, this is two parts. This is a part and this is a part. And then the, they have properties, all right? Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm making much sense. I probably sound like a crazy person. Um, anyhow, right there. You see, like, if you look at the ends, these ends don't have anything. Oh, and the leaves fell off, right? Like, the leaves fall whenever you chop it. And if I chop that, only that leaf fell. If I chop that one, only that leaf fell, right? So what about the tree modules, okay? Um... And again, this is only guesstimation. I don't know exactly what Defaultio has in his game, or if he has a module. I mean, I hope it's a module. Like, this is some intense programming if he doesn't have modules. Uh, anyhow, my intent is to actually, like, give you an idea of what a module is. Just a basic rundown. So, let's go and do that. Ooh. So, um, let's just, uh... Let's jump over into studio, and I'm going to go to my test box, okay? Uh, we'll, we'll just use my test box. That's a great idea. Um, okay, inside the server script service, I'm going to go ahead and hit the little plus button here. I'm going to create a module script. I'm going to rename that module script to cat mod. Cat mod, that's fine. Um, you can rename this if you want. I usually do, so I'm just going to call this cat and cat. This is not like a normal script, okay? This first one right here, cat, this is the object that's going to contain all the stuff that we put in down here. Um, now, what I want to do for the cat, cat.name equals blah, cat.color uh, equals blah, and cat.age equals blah. So what this is, this says, hey, this is going to start adding properties. So technically, I could have done like, name, uh, color, age, stuff like that, right? And it, it would start adding them into what those things are. I don't know if that made much sense. Um, it's a dot, it's a property, it's a thing. Okay, let's do this. Um, function, cat, oops, capital cat, colon, um, set name. 
and then I'm going to give it the variable name. So inside this function, I'm going to say uh, self dot name equals lowercase name. Basically, what it says is this property right here, self dot name, is going to be set to the name that we give the function. Okay, so let's go back over into my my lumber. Right, I got my little test box here. I'm going to insert a scripty script. And this is a server side script, it's not a local side script. Wait, could I do it with a local side script? Hmm, don't know. I don't know if I could. Uh, we'll get to it. <clears throat> so, this I'm going to say local cat equals require scheme dot server script service dot cat. Cat mod. Okay. So, basically, I'm setting cat to an object that's going to get created by cat mod, okay? So now anytime I call cat dot, it has age and color and name, and then it's got a function called set name. So if I do um, cat, uh, here, let's do print cat dot name, and it should just be blank. Ooh, I bet I could do, uh, let's just do this, default. Default, 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 default. There we go. So, um, do, 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 back over to my script. If I print cat.name and then I'm going to do cat colon set name to George. And then we're going to do print cat.name. Now, I don't know if I can manipulate it directly. Let's do cat.name equals. Bob, and then we're going to do print cat.name. I don't know if that'll work. Default George Bob. It did. It worked. Uh, is there. Hold on. What if I make these local? Local. Local. And look. Whoopsie daisy. Didn't insert. Local age. Now I don't think that'll work. There it goes. Unexpected uh, symbol near dot. Wait, what? So it's inside the, the script itself. So I shouldn't be able to do that. Um, oh, we're going to have to give it a way to get the name. So function cat, oops, cat colon get name like that. We're going to do return self dot name like that okay so let's go back over to our script uh, I'm not going to be able to set it directly and I don't think that that's going to work because we don't have the property name anymore okay so stop so um, let's do cat colon get uh oh Take these out. Does that work? No, that didn't work. Oh, wait. What did I? Oh. <laughs> Silly goose. There we go. Stop. Now play. See if that works. Nil and George. Okay, so cat dot name. We can't do dot. So. Uh, the first one's going to be cat colon get name, like that. Stop, 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 play. Default, George. All right. So now that I've made these local to the script itself, anytime I type this out, I shouldn't get the property. So print cat dot. See how the dot's no longer there? But I do have the colon. Right. Cat colon... Oh, stop. There we go. Cat dot get name set name. So I only have the two functions. It doesn't have the properties. These are now protected inside the script. They're not a they're not a global variable. It's it's not going to return. Um so basically what you could do is you could create yourself a module like a tree 
and then you could hold all those properties about the tree inside that module or inside that object. And then you could create multiple objects of that module and pass in the properties. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay, so um, we have get, get name uh, and all that. Let's do function uh, cat colon set age age just like that and then we can do age equals age I know that seems kind of uh, kind of confusing but this age right here is up here and this age right here is right here now if I had a small age like this I could do age right now if I double click all four of these are whoa right self dot age this is where you use the self so this age refers to here. This age self refers to here. So uh, we're going to do the same thing. Function cat get age. Uh, don't need any um, arguments for it. We can do ret re return self dot age like that. I think. Oh wait, I didn't do a thing name expected Duh. so um cat colon set age uh we're gonna make them four years old and then we're going to do print cat dot get age like that there we go so now george is four years old and um, what's kind of cool is I'm going to create another script. We're, we're going to call this first script. First script. Like that. Uh, let's go ahead and add a second one. Call it uh, script. <clears throat> I'm going to call this one second script. Second script. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to just do um, wait for two seconds and then I'm going to say cat equals require game dot oops game dot scripting service dot cat mod like that. So basically I'm setting a new variable over here cat uh, and I can make this local local cat equals requires the same module. All right, but we've waited two seconds. So now I'm going to do print. Uh, this is second script colon space dot dot concatenate cat colon get name. Okay, uh, like that. <clears throat> and I don't need a semicolon. <sighs> Too much uh, C sharp and other languages. So. We're going to hit play. Boink, there it goes. This is the second script. George, wait a second, code. How did that know that the first one was named George? Well, that's because the module script is shared, kind of, like we, we required it. It's, it's still running. It's its own script, but we can create functions to call to another script. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Um, here and we can actually um, do this uh, cats set name equals Bob all right and in this one our first one we're going to wait for four seconds and then print cat uh, get name like that so So, the first cat is George, it said it to Bob, and now the first script came back and said, hey, his name's Bob. So it was George, and then something else changed it, and now it's Bob. So this is, uh, again, this is all running on server side. It's all server scripts, I think. I don't know if I can do it with a local script. Insert object local script, why not? Well, I mean, that's why we're here, we're playing, right? Cat equals <clears throat> game. Oh, require. Require game dot game dot. 
service.catmod. I don't know if it will pass the variables. Um, let's do wait for six seconds and then print uh, cat colon git name like that. So the first should the, the first should go okay. Getting lost in my scripts here. Second script, first script. Uh, we're gonna do this colon uh, first script colon. That. It's starting to rain outside again. Uh, colon da da like that. <clears throat> and then on the local script, I'm going to print local script colon space space like that dot dot. Uh, are we still good over here? Yeah, we're good. Just want to make sure that I, I don't log out. Whee. Okay, so um, I wonder if that's going to work. So there's George, changed to Bob. Bob's there. Local script, come on, local script. Yeah, local script's not gonna know how to do that. So, does not work in the local script unless the script is like in the workspace or something like that. Ooh, let's do that. Um, let's change this to replicated storage. Replicated storage, I think. Replicated storage. And you could do it like this game colon git service replicated storage dot cat mod. Like that. You could do that if you wanted to. Uh, let's move these into the replicated storage. Like that. Colon dot cat. I guess it doesn't show. Mod. There we go. And then wait six seconds. Expected equals. Oh, cat equals choir colon. There we go. I'll just do it a different way. No, it still expects a wait. Why does it expect a? Oh, bank. There you go. Forgot one of the parentheses at the end. I hope this is showing like replicated storage. Copy that and we'll go to the first one and paste just like that. Go, hope it works. <clears throat> That's the second script. The first script says it's Bob and local script doesn't know how to touch it. <clears throat> Darn it. Wait, where's the local script located? Where did I put the local script? Local script is inside the test box. Okay. Yep. Um, get that out of here. <clears throat> I'm not going to be using the local script to create the trees on the server, by the way. That would be really bad because then somebody could ma manipulate it from the client side and actually grow their own trees. No, no. Don't want that. Um, I think that's that's the basics of what you need to know. And you can come in here to like the cat mod. See how it's like set the name, set set git, set git, set git. You could come in here and just do um, function cat colon set and then do name, color, age like that. And then um, here, let's, let's change these all to the same case. I don't like doing the same case just because it's very confusing. All right, so get rid of the, the sets like that. And there we go. So now we can just do uh, self dot name equals, oh, that's it says age name. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. I'm just kidding, I, I couldn't hear you. It's a video, it doesn't, doesn't work like that. <laughs> um, equals name uh, self dot color equals color and self dot age equals age. So that'll get that all set up. And then I'll actually give it the function 
uh, cat colon git color. There we go. Return self dot self dot color. Um, oh, it's because it's. I guess I could still just use the local because I mean it's inside the same script. I'll do self dot name. There we go. Everything look good. I think so. Go. Oh, it's not gonna know. Stop. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Set. Is it just set? There we go. George, uh, what was the order again? Uh, name, color, age. So if I do, hold on. I don't know if it's going to do this. Set. Yeah, it doesn't give me the repo the required properties. Ugh. Kind of like uh, if I were to do print colon like that. Well, that didn't work either. Hmm. Okay, let's just go uh, Bob, brown cat, and age of four. So, we don't have that set anymore. We can get rid of all this extra stuff. Blink. Print, cat.name, print, cat. Uh, get color, and same thing, only with age. There we go. And we'll go get rid of the second script. Deleted. And play. So we should have Bob the cat. He's color brown. Wait, what? Print age. Oh, get age. Psh. Psh. Stop. Play. Go. There we go. So uh, the first one, why did we get nil? Oh, it's because I, I printed a nil right there. It's not been set to anything. Get that out of here. There we go. So we create uh, the cat Bob Brown four. Good. I think that's all you need to know. So um, here, let's change this up. I'll show you the idea behind this. We're gonna call this tree. Um, name. Material uh, sections um, no it has to be like a table or is it an array or is it like that could be like that no equals yeah let's take, leave it a, leave it a table so this is the idea behind what I'm going to do with my modules. So I'm going to have the name of the tree, the material that it's made out of, how many sections it's got, uh, local health, local um, value, value, local plank, what kind of plank it turns into. So anyhow. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a short one just because I want to get back into the actual programming, getting the scripts done. Um, I hope this has been informative, and I hope that I didn't confuse anybody out there. And I hope that you start using modules yourself, because modules will make your code much more cleaner. It makes it where you're not typing out repetitive code multiple times over and over and over again. Uh, there's also there's other ways that you can like create tables upon tables, um, where you can have multiple cats. Like it's not just cat and you're renaming it Bob and stuff like that. You could have cat one is Bob, cat two is Frisk, frisk. cat three is Sands and and Papyrus, um, <clears throat> Undertale. Anyhow, <laughs> thank you everyone for watching this episode of Let's Make a Game. I hope I've uh, informed you a little bit because I looked around and I didn't, I, I did not see module scripts on any of my videos, and I sure didn't see it inside my book. Um, so, huge, huge shout out to Adams Media and um, Simon and Schuster for publishing my book. This is not a sponsored um, video, by the way. This is one of my videos, but I wrote a book, <laughs> and I'm very proud of that. So, love you guys very much. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end of the videos, and we will talk to you very soon. 
outro. Thank you.